Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the topic of methods. Uh, something that you're already familiar with, and in fact, I'm seeing some of you actually used it in assignment six. Good start. At least I think three or four people are already using this stuff. So what I'd like to do is talk about uh, the needs for the need for methods. I think which we have covered. Anytime you have a repetitive task, you can use a method. So for example, if you want to find a sum of integers, a program that you have already written, uh, from a starting point, like from 1 to 10, or 20 to 30, or 33 to 35 to 45, you know, you can go off and write separate program to do that, right? And you guys have seen this kind of code before. What we are doing here is declaring a variable and writing uh, lines of code again and again, right? Which does not make sense because when it when it's time to when you start repeating lines of code, there is usually an opportunity for either using loops. In this case, we are already using loops. It's probably a good idea to use the method. So you don't have to go about uh, reiterating. So what is a method? Method is, so, a construct where you can take a bunch of lines of code and give it a name. That's all it is. So look at these highlighted lines of code. It's a for loop that's doing a simple iteration and adding the value to sum. We can take these small program blocks and give it a name. That'll be a method. We can pass some input and also return a value from it that's optional. In Java, we write, when we start writing functions right now, starting with the language, we are writing static functions. The reason we are creating static function is so those can be called without creating an object. Because we still have to learn about object-oriented programming. We haven't done that yet. So what we do is when we write a method inside a class, we can basically use class name dot method name and call it. Right? Is this picture pretty clear? Any questions? We have repeating program blo program blocks, and it's it's basically unnecessary to write code like this. So instead, what you do is you write a function. Sum. You provide the input. You provide a return value, and then the same code is set up and if you provide a return type then you use the return statement in the bar so you'll be writing a ton of custom functions in assignment 7 so i want to make sure that the concept is nicely applied and you're going to be using other things from the past as well loops and decision making constructs so we're going to look at the structure of a method in a little bit more detail in the next few minutes. So it becomes abundantly clear how the structure is to be set up and how is the memory organized around it so you can, uh, so you understand the inner workings of uh, the one specific thing called the stack. You all remember the structure of the memory, right? Code segment, data segment, stack and heap and the purpose of each. Right? It's good to refresh your memory on that construct. So here we have the, the sum function method. Function and method are used interchangeably in this discussion. And a call to the method is made three times. The code looks a lot cleaner. Code is also maintainable. Why? It's in one place. If I find an issue, a bug in a method, I can go update the method and, and I'm done. So defining methods, it's a collection of statements that are grouped together and we give that group a name. 
So we can pass in we can pass input of any data type and as much as many as possible. And but we can only get one return value. The fact that we are calling this guy public, the method public, it means that it can be accessed from anywhere. We learn more about scope in your next course when you go out and take 36B. So we declare a, a local variable and we do something and then return the results. And this is showing a function call or invocation of a method. Invoking a method, method call are essentially the same thing. So you use the name of the method and you pass arguments. So we are using the word formal parameters for what we pass in here. And we use the word arguments for what is passed when you invoke a function. If the function has a return type, then it's important that when you invoke the function, you put something to receive the value. So like in this case, we have the max function returning an int. It's important for that function to, uh, when it returns a value for it to be received or printed somewhere. Okay. So let's expand on this a little bit. Kind of showing you the definition of the method and all the things on it. If you guys can't see this far away, there's a local copy you can open uh, on the website. There's a PowerPoint and a PDF version. So that way you guys can follow along easily. So the first line is called the method header. Then you have the curly braces for begin and end of a method. That is referred to as the body of the method. The signature part is what's in the rectangle here, as, it, as is clearly pointed out. So therefore the return value type and all these modifiers, public and static, these are just keywords or modifiers that are used, are not part of the signature. The set of parameters that you pass in are called formal parameters. And when you pass in values when we are invoking a method, those are called arguments. So there is a relationship between arguments and parameters. So these arguments and parameters, there's a relationship. And, and here is the relationship. The value of arguments is passed to formal parameters. So like the value of x, which is an argument, will go to num1. The value of y, will go to num2. Data type of arguments must match with parameters by position, left to right. So what does that mean? If I have four, argu four formal parameters that I've defined, and let's say they are integer float, integer float, then when I'm ready to assign a value, when I'm ready to pass the arguments, the data type must match and it must be in that order. Otherwise, the function call will fail. Okay, you'll get a compiler error.
And the third thing is number of arguments is always equal to number of parameters. If you follow these three rules, every time you work with a method, you'll be perfectly fine. Okay? So, so good coding practices with methods. And I'm gonna be grading you guys on this. If a return type is specified, then use a return statement. Otherwise, you will obviously in Java get a compiler error. Another thing is a return statement should always be the last line. I don't want to see more than one return statement. Should use only one return statement per method. So if let's say you have a bunch of values that you want to return from a method, what do you, are you gonna use multiple return statements? Or is it better to uh, maybe declare a local variable and track the value inside the method until you get to the end and then return the value. That's a better way to do it. Get it? So you may have several, like in this particular example, we have results that could be different and a local variable is declared. That's a good practice. And you're expected to use that when you're writing methods. Okay. So safe for me to move on? You guys are caught up? Okay. So the next thing, method signature and the word formal parameters, that's it. And, and the relationship to the argument. When you declare formal parameters, there are two parts in that. Those are like variable declarations, but you basically have a data type and a variable name there, as you can see. So these are, these are the two variable names. X and Y become um, variables that are used for values that are passed into the method. Now, when we talk about the return value type, and so if we say an integer here, you have to make sure that you return the same data type value when you, when you use a variable name with the return keyword. If that data type mismatches, it's a problem. I mean, if I return a float, that would be an issue. But if I have, say, a float in the return value type, and I return an int, that probably will be okay. Although it's good to match the return type 100% all the time, but you might remember the rules of casting, implicit casting, right? So, if we end up using the return type void, no return statement is needed. That means there is no output from the function or the method, excuse me, right? There is no return statement required in case of when you use void. Now, how do you use method names? So let's say you have a class called test max and it has a method called max so look at the note look at the note above 
So if you have a method called max, it can be invoked using the class name. So if, if I have something like this, and we were just working on this in the slide, Right? You remember seeing this? So now if I wanted to call this method or invoke the method, I can say test max dot max. Or <clears throat> I can just say max dot max 10 comma 20. When you have a class, you can qualify the method name with using the name of the class. Okay? Yes? Will there be an error with the test and tests? Will there be an error? Yeah. Why? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, that's a typo. You're acting as a good compiler. Thank you. Yes, that would have been a compiler error if I was creating... I meant to type test max. Okay? Invoking a method. Looking at the call stack. So, this thing shows the stack. When you declare local variables, right? So, variable that is declared inside a method is called a local variable. And it is only useful inside the method. So for example, when i, j, and k are declared, those are useful inside main only. Okay? i, j, and k cannot be used inside max. Even though max might live in the same class file, right? It may live in the same class, it cannot be used in, in the max method. So we have i and j, right? i and j is passed to num1 and num2. Then we execute the function and the value is returned back to k and k should contain what? The maximum value of i or j. What we're trying to cover here, right, is the relationship between i, j and num1, num2. That's one thing. I and J are what? Arguments or parameters? I and J are arguments or parameters? Arguments. And what are parameters? Num1 and num2 are formal parameters. So what we're going to do is take the value of I, put it into num1, take the value of J, put it into num2, the max function will do its magic, it will return the result and the value will go back to fill in the blank. The value will go back to the calling function, the calling function right here. And then it will go to k. k will contain the result of the max function. Okay. So this is like looking at it line by line. The variable i is declared in the stack, then j is declared. Then we call, then we declare k. And then we are ready to call the max function. 
when we invoke the max function, we are trying to pass the value of i and j to num1 and num2. Okay? Try to focus on this because how does the stack work is a good exam question. And this picture shows you how to do it, how, how it works basically and how to respond to that question. So the value of i goes to num1, the value of j goes to num2. So we are making a copy of the value from i to num1 and j to num2. And then we declare a local variable, result. And then we compare num1 and num2, if it's, it's true, right? Then the result is equal to num1, and we are ready to return the result. When the result is returned, it's gonna go back to k. You see that? How does it go back to k? A copy of result, right here, is passed to k. k becomes five, because i, was greater, num1 was greater than num2. Is everyone with me or are you guys on something else? Because some of you seem to be not engaged in this. That's why I'm asking. Okay? So then the result is returned. When the result is returned, Whatever was on the stack for max, you can see it's gone. In the last slide it was there, in the current slide it's gone. That's how local variables function or behave, or, or are supposed to behave. They're, they're supposed to be washed off the stack. Then we execute the print statement and print things up. Okay? What we just covered was Pass by value also. When I'm interacting with i and j, right? If I am making a copy of a value into num1, num2, that's pass by value. That is a common uh, term that is used when working with functions. Pass by value. Next quarter, you guys, if you end up taking advanced Java, you learn about pass by reference. Where you pass in an address, right? We're not dealing with that right now. So, and the other thing is, returning a value is also passed by value. Because we're making a copy of what's in result back to K. So keep that in mind, okay? And some of these lines that you saw here, Right? That is also the process of debugging, which I'm going to show you today in the compiler. So you can step through the code line by line to figure out what might be going wrong where, and then figure out logical issues in your code. There is a void method, doesn't return a value but it'll just perform a set of actions. If you want to bunch of, uh, print a, a bunch of things, that would be a perfect example of a void method. So here is another example of a method. It, it receives a message and end. And basically what, what is this for loop doing? It prints out the message the number of times that we pass in. Like it, it prints the message n times. So if we say welcome to Java, it will print welcome to Java five times. If we say computer science, it will print it 15 times. If we say 15 computer science, will that work? The data type is mismatched because the rules of uh, arguments and parameters aren't followed. So 
So this will give a compiler error, right? Okay, so what I want you guys to do is write a program to swap two values. We're gonna write a static function and we're gonna see if we can swap a value in a method using Java. You can use the reference example, like you can use this, you pretty much write functions like this. All you have to do is try to swap two values. Take the value of x, put it into y, take the value of y, put it into x, okay? You write your function, I'll write mine, and we will look at it in Eclipse in a moment together. Uh, but maybe five minutes on this will be great, okay? Take five minutes and try to write this code. 